Namaste, everyone, and welcome to Anchor Delight for part two for Monday here in the United States. And um, before we start, let's ask for blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints, all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to my teacher, Master Tokok Sui, Mahaguji Meiling, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. All right. So I hope that you were able to watch and take notes on the first session where we talked about the importance of the mind, that everything starts with the mind. Actually, it's the mental faculty. When you think of something and then from there, it starts the whole process, right? You create a thought, that thought gets so strong, then your emotions get involved. And before you know it, you're physically manifesting it or materializing it. Watch the video earlier. We went through in detail also about the law of attraction where people just like quote the part of it that they like. Oh, if I manifest something, I just be more positive and it'll just manifest. Mm -hmm. What happens to all the negative thoughts and emotions that are sitting in your closet? Which is your aura. Those have to be released. Otherwise, actually 20, 30, 40 or how many years of negativity creates a bigger surface area of attraction than your positive affirmations. Just keep that in mind. Now, let's take it a little further when it comes to um, using your mental faculty. So the quote I use here is by Confucius, not to make you confused. <laughs> he said, wherever you go, go with all your heart, right? You heard that a lot. Wherever you go, go with all your heart. Uh, if you don't mind, we added an addendum and bring your brain with you. Okay, let's break this down. <clears throat> Unfortunately, and I've seen this before, you know, a lot of you came from Tony Robbins events and, you know, you have to live with passion, which is great. Unfortunately, some people, they don't take his entire message. They just say, oh, I'm passionate about something and that's good enough. No, it's not good enough. Even with Tony, he says, you know, Tony Robbins says, he's very passionate about being successful. He didn't just say, oh, I'm passionate, that's it, let it happen. No, he sits down, thinks it through, make a plan, execute the plan. In other words, you're very passionate. You go with all your heart, but bring your brain with you. Unfortunately, a lot of people on the spiritual path, they just hear one part of the teaching. Yeah, I'm so passionate. I go with all my heart. And they leave the brain in the car. And then you ask, hey, how come you're not planning anything? Well, you know, I'm very passionate. I'm very sincere. I'm waiting for the spiritual download to give me inspiration to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been waiting? Uh, I feel a little bit, I'm just being patient. It's helping grow my patient's muscles. <sighs> How many people do you know like that? So I always like to share the story to just kind of drive it home. Many years ago, I know some of you heard this like 20th times already. Grandma said Chua Kok was staying at our house. And... I drive him to bookstores, I drive him to events, and most of the time we pass through this intersection. This time, pass through that intersection, he goes, how are they going to make money? I'm going, what in the world is he talking about? So I said, Master, what do you mean, how are they going to make money? He said, you know, we just passed by that truck that's selling watermelons. I look at the size of the, tr <coughs> the, size of the truck, I calculated the number of watermelons they have in there and how much they're selling watermelon. There's no way they make a profit. I'm sitting here going, I've seen the truck so many times. I just kind of zoom by it. I, who cares? Right? It's a truck with watermelons. And you have a speech teacher that sits there and go calculate. I calculated. <coughs> There's no way they can make money. And I'm sitting there, I'm driving and go, okay, yes, master. He must figure out, like, hey, he must have read my mind, like, he's probably wondering how come I'm sitting here talking about trivial things. So he goes like this. Oh, uh, you might be wondering how come I'm, talk I'm talking about trivial things. I go, uh, what am I supposed to say, right? Uh, I don't know, master. And he goes like this. You see, it's very, very important, people on the spiritual path, to sharpen their mind. In addition to teaching and traveling all over the world, I still keep my businesses and I make sure the businesses are profitable. He has many businesses that allowed him to travel all over the world. 
and he makes sure they're profitable. He, with a one phone call, he would say, okay, he, I hear him ask, okay, what's going on? How's, how much money is in the bank? Okay, we need to do this strategy, that strategy. Simultaneously, he's traveling and teaching. So just because you're sincere, you want to share spiritual teaching, you want to be a good healer, you want to help other people, your heart is in the right place, right? Go with all your heart, as Confucius said. But you still have to what? Engage your mental faculty. Now, I've shared this with you before. Let me just kind of add this in there. A lot of you on the spiritual path, me included, in the early years, I would depend. I'm waiting for the download. I'm waiting for that intuition. Maybe some great spiritual teacher will just throw that inspiration at me. Which happens. You forgot one important factor. Intuition has to be balanced with the intellect. Okay? Intuition has to be balanced with the intellect. What does that mean? When the information comes in, it's given to you, boom, right here. Like a big hard drive was given to you. It takes your mental faculty to unpack it. Make sense? I asked my teacher one time, I said, uh, Master Cho, how long did your teacher, Mahaguji Mei Ling, or at that time we call him Holy Master Mei Ling, gave you the teaching on pranic healing and arhatic yoga? I think it was pranic healing, arhatic yoga, or just pranic healing. How long? Was it years and years and years? <laughs> you know what he told me? Oh, uh, less than five minutes. I'm looking, I'm like, all that knowledge in less than five minutes. He goes, yeah, less than five minutes. And it took me over five years, more than five years, to analyze it, do a lot of experiments, make a lot of mistakes, to come up with a system that is both safe and effective. It just blew my mind. Well, the great teacher chose someone with a super sharp mental faculty. Grandmaster Chokoksui was a chemical engineer and a very successful businessman. He didn't just give it to somebody who's like, okay, um, well, let's just go with the flow. Whatever happens will happen. No, he gave it to somebody who's very willful, very mentally sharp, very, very grounded. The intention is important. You want to be of service to others. But even then, you think about it. Oh, I want to feed a hundred people. I want to feed a thousand people. Good. How? Number one, do you have a target? Number two, do you have a plan? Do you have the tasks laid out? Do you have the people? Do you have the resources? Do you have a schedule? When you're going to schedule everything, the things get moving. Do you have enough resources, people, and energy to execute this? Uh, is that important? Absolutely. Many years ago, I was teaching in Arizona. And this lady came up to me really excited. He goes, oh, you know, this, this piece of land, I want to develop it. I want to develop to have all the healing modalities so that it can serve so many people. I heard her go, wow, that's amazing. That's great. How big is it? And she told me how many hectares or acres. I go, oh, okay. So I asked her a simple question. I go, great. What's your business plan? She goes, huh? What's your business plan? You know, like you have this piece of land. How are you going to develop it? How are you going to plan out all these different healing modalities? How are you going <clears> to... <throat> everything. You know, what's your business plan? How are you going to make it profitable? He goes, she goes, oh, I'm working on it. Okay, so I told her I'll be back in six months. You know, I taught there and then six months I come back for higher classes. So talk to me then. Let me know. She, she said, okay. So I was like, man, this is great. You know, it's a big piece of land and, and so on and so on. Come back six months later. I see her again in class. And so, so I said, okay, what's your business plan? What happened? You know, I, I was excited for her too. I go, great, we can develop this place, have different healing modalities, panicking, being one of them to be able to serve so many people. She goes, uh, I'm still working on it. Okay. It's been 20 something years, still zero. Then later I found, later on I found out she doesn't even have the land. She, show, she just seen this piece of land with a for sale sign. Uh, it's, it's a nice location. <clears throat> she saw it's excited. She thought sincerity and excitement alone is enough. Nope. 
But she's sincere. A person could be sincere and sincerely misguided. Engage the mental faculty. Sharpen your mind. Study, study, compute, calculate. Okay? Yes, go with all your heart. Be passionate about it. But bring your brain with you. And I shared this so many times already. You remember it, right? What are the questions you ask? You want something to happen. Number one, what is your target? What is your objective? You want to open up a healing center. You want to serve so many people. You want to improve your relationship. Whatever your target goal is, what? Clearly define what you want. It's not one of those, I'm waiting for the inspiration. They'll never happen. Some of you, yes. But the majority, if you live like that, never happen. So what is it you want? Number two, why do you want it? This why, as Tony Robbins says, how big is your why will determine your passion. Because if you're so, I have to make this work because I really want to serve all these people. When you hit an obstacle, it'll keep you going because your why is so big. That's why he asks, how big is your why? But don't stop there. You're passionate. Great. Why? I don't want it. Next, how? What are the tasks involved for it to happen? Next, when? Oh, sometime in the future. I forget about it. It'll never happen. Mm -mm. That's how you test how far along a person is in their plan. Okay? The when is the key. Because when tests a person's emotional commitment. Anybody can plan anything. Anybody, anybody can have a goal. The minute you put the word when and give it a date or a schedule, you're committed. When is the funding going to come in? When is the building going to come in? When are the volunteers going to come in? When, 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 when? That's how you know if somebody is serious or somebody's just smoking too much weed and having all these great ideas, but nothing happens. So go with all your heart. Bring your brain with you. <laughs> That's it. Very simple. That's how you make anything happen. And you've heard me say this before, and I say it at UPW. Seekers are achievers. They're not floaters. Seekers, spiritual seekers, they want to make a difference. They have a strong spiritual connection. They want to make a difference. True spiritual speak seekers produce results, not just ideas. That's it. So I hope that helps. Sharpen your mind. Increase your willpower so you can manifest the goodness within you. That's it. That's the lesson. And to finish it off, remember what I shared with some of you before? My teacher said, <coughs> my teacher said, make sure you leave a spiritual landmark. What does that mean? You leave this place better than when you first came in. How many lives would you have touched before you left your body, before you leave your body? How many lives have you transformed before you leave your body? That's it. Super, super simple. Okay. Shall we meditate? And as always, we leave this um, videos online on each platform in the pranicking.com, massacre.org, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. It's there. We leave it there so you can go back, study it, do the meditation, and remind yourself. All right, let's meditate. Let's ask for blessings to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, 
to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Chokokswi, Mahangu Jumailing, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love, guidance, help, healing, and protection. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. All right, shall we? Put your hand like this. Focus on your crown. I am that I am. I'm not the body. I'm not any of my emotions. I'm not any of my thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence to regulate the creation of any thoughts. I am being of divine love to regulate in the creation of emotions and thoughts. I am a being of divine power to control and produce the movements of this physical body. I am that, the soul, the thinker, feeler, and mover. I am that, that I am. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spark, the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I'm one with God. I'm one with all. There's only oneness. We are one. Now open your hands in blessing. So for this session, we will do the great invocation. The earlier session was Twin Hearts Meditation. We'll do the great invocation. You say, we are one. We are one. Now imagine the earth in front of you, project a brilliant beam of light coming out of our hands and filling up the entire earth. <clears throat> Let's chant Om three times. Om. 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 From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend throughout the entire earth. May God's messenger of love return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters and spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth. So be it. So be it. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out. May it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth. So be it. Now keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth, be still, and just let the blessings flow through us. Bless every person, every being on earth. Bless your country. There's countries in the world where people are suffering. So be it. Again. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the, into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend throughout the entire earth. May God's messenger of love return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters and spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth. Now, so be it. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out. May it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest 
the divine plan on earth now, so be it. Can you feel the energy flowing through you? Some of you feel a vibration in your body, your hands. Some of you might feel a pressure in your crown. Just let the energy flow through you. Some of you can feel sensations on your forehead. Just let the energy flow through. Now, imagine a brilliant golden flame floating above your head. Put your entire attention on that golden flame. Be still and listen. The rest will be done for you. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend throughout the entire earth. May God's messenger of love return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the Holy Masters and spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth. Be still. From the center which we call the human race and all the other races, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth now. So be it. Be still. Can you feel the energy and the blessings flowing through? Now intensify the flow of energy by chanting Om three times together. Om. Now put your hands down, keep your eyes closed, keep your attention completely in that beautiful flame above your head. Be still. Gently, slowly, very gently and slowly come back. Move your fingers, move your toes, move your body a little bit. Slowly come back. Okay, slowly open your eyes. How was your meditation? Observe your thoughts, observe your emotions. Anybody notice it's super quiet? So when we do these meditations, as we allow ourselves to be the channel or the pipeline to bless the earth, so many beings need blessings. We're just like one of the pipelines. So as that energy flows through us, the magic word is through, it clears our garbage out. Now imagine doing that six times a week. Because we have to try to cover them each time zone, right? That's what happens. You do this over and over and over again. 
So that becomes your default. So you can be in the room where people are screaming and yelling, and you look at them like, it's as if you're looking at everyone from behind a clear glass window. You're like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> and like qualities attract. If you're at peace, their negative thoughts, their negative emotions does not have anything to attach to. So when people tell you, yeah, you know, as you spiritually evolve, as your frequency go higher, people will attack you. You really realize how ridiculous that is? As you raise your frequency, you attract higher frequencies, not lower ones. But since people don't understand these things, they go, yeah, you know, you're meditating, so therefore you're, you're going higher, so people want to attack you. No. What it is, is when you feel stuff when you meditate, two things. One, you're feeling the contrast between your frequency and the people around you. Like you start to feel it. It's different. Number two, it could also mean when you're just starting out, when you're doing your meditation, you're removing layers of old stuff coming to the first surface. In our Hatha Yoga, we call those ancient seeds. Those are lessons, pent up emotions and thoughts that are inside the chakra that we carry lifetime after lifetime until we release them. So those things get magnified. Make sense? It's not because somebody wants to attack you. People got better things to do. They don't wake up in the morning, oh, that person's meditating, let me attack them. No, they got better things to do in their life. They're so busy, you know, into themselves anyway. Just do your practice. That's that. Okay, quick announcement. Uh, starting Thursday, we will be having, um, what do you call this? Healer's Mastery, where we have panicking level one to level four, basically nine to 11, every single day till Monday. So that means there's no anchor light um, Friday and Monday. And then after that, I fly to Chicago to do it all over again. So maybe we'll have one this Wednesday because that's the day we prepare to go to, to the venue to have the class. Let's see what we can do. Regardless, we have all these videos that you can watch, you can study. And remember the full moon meditation, the full three full powerful full moons, the one that just went by, uh, some people don't know, don't have the link. I'll try to get that for you. Then the most powerful full moon of the year, Waisak Festival is going to be April 23rd. And the distribution of blessings and energy the month after. And this year, that uh, third full moon is also celebrated as the Waisak in the Buddhist tradition. So you get to celebrate twice. And if you want to fully prepare yourself, the seven days of purification, just go to masterco.org. The link is there. Okay. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. And we will see you when we see you. I'll do what I can uh, on Wednesday. It depends on the preparation for the class. We might or might not have Anchor the Light. But remember the lesson today. Very simple. Wherever you go, go with all your heart, but bring your brain with you. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Namaste. Take good care.